I boycotted Facebook and I've never gone back. But Twitter was totally different. Like, it's not invasive at all. You can put as much or as little as you want in there. And it's more anonymous. I was talking to people all around the world. And you just basically uh, post one-liners. Like, And in the beginning, there was a character limit. I think it was a 140 character limit. So you had to keep it really short and sweet. They've now made it lengthier. Um, you can you can post more and also you can post photos um, in the beginning they had twit pic and then that was gone but you could still post photos and thoughts and, and you could retweet things and anyway these days twitter is twitter's my jam like um i'm on youtube as well obviously and i love youtube thank you youtube um so i'll still have that no matter what but twitter is where i've spent a lot of my time um now it's become a routine and i mean in a time when there's so much chaos and uncertainty i like having something that i can be sure of and that i can control so my daily routine is usually i do the wordle i, I love wordle and then i'll post my um score on twitter with a not so subtle hint about what the word was that usually hopefully you wouldn't get unless you'd already done it and then i doom scroll I doom scroll about COVID, climate, whatever's going on, and retweet to amplify messages. And um, and on uh, Mondays, well, when it's on Bachelor in Paradise, I uh, watch on live tweet and The Bachelorette, Bachelor. If any of those, the Bachelor Nation franchise shows are on, then I'm live tweeting. Um, so yeah, and it's part of it. it helps me feel like part of a community because I am very isolated. So that's like as close as I get to social interaction. And usually my tweets might only get like, you know, a few likes and a few comments, whatever, or some, you know, go without notice. But um, some of them really blow up.
it's nice to have that outlet just to to vent and to weigh in on things and also Twitter was where I got most of my COVID information because there's so much disinformation and misinformation out there and it seems like government and public health want to keep you in the dark so I appreciate Twitter because I trust the alarmists on there like Dr. Fiegelding that has been right from the beginning I mean the alarmists are always right they warned how bad COVID was and so I really didn't want to miss that I really don't want to give up or lose Twitter. So months ago, obviously, I uh, heard that Elon Musk was buying Twitter and I thought, oh no, please, for the love of God, don't turn it into some right wing propaganda machine hellscape. But I was hoping it was going to fall through. And then um, it seemed like he did buy it, but then he changed his mind and he was trying to get out of it. And I'm like, please, yes, yay, like somebody save Twitter. Don't let him take it over. But then I guess they took him to court for breach of contract. Anyway, he was stuck with it. So $44 billion later and he owns Twitter. Well, that's just great. And it's like a lot of people were questioning his motives. He claimed that he wanted free speech. But I think what he really wanted is to control the narrative. He wanted to control what, who would be able to speak and kind of like gently dissuade certain people from having a voice. But anyway, I thought, okay, well, what's the worst that can happen? Well, he was threatening to bring back 45, the Orange Menace, who has been banned since starting an insurrection. Understandably so. I don't actually know how he's not in jail right now, so please lock him up. Lock him up now. But anyway, okay, so Musk owns Twitter now, and obviously it's been a mess ever since. So recently he... Um, I guess a lot of advertisers, now that they knew that he'd taken it over, they want no part of it. So they've lost a lot of their advertising res revenue. So then I guess Musk was brainstorming how to make some money. So he, he was going to start charging people um, that were the verified accounts with the blue check, like celebrities and public figures. He was going to start charging them $8 a month to be verified. I think he originally said $20 and then people were like, oh, hell no, we won't pay that. Then he's like, well, maybe eight, but no, they're, they're not going to pay that. So, so then, um, it's like, okay, well, if they're really a celebrity or public figure, they don't have to pay it, but he opened it up to anyone. Anyone could have a blue check if they would just pay for it. Well, this is idiotic because you're making it easier for scam artists and catfish to pretend that there's someone else and they've got a little blue check to, next to their name. And if everyone has a blue check, then it's basically meaningless. Like before, the verification was to show that that's really that person, so you could trust that. But now, anyone could be anything. So anyway, people were having fun with it. Um, people were pretending to be other people. Um, Valerie Bertinelli, for a day, changed her name to Elon Musk, and that was pretty funny. And she seemed to get away with it but then uh, Kathy Griffin did the same thing and I don't know what she said exactly but he ended up banning her so much for free speech like unless he says something he doesn't like and so much for free speech if you have to pay eight dollars to be on it but anyway I'm like I never cared about verification so I wouldn't be paying eight dollars I'm like whatever like to me it, it was kind of like when Wordle got bought out by the New York Times and I thought, oh no, please don't ruin it. Please don't put it behind a paywall, but they didn't. And I've still been playing it all this time, 500 games later, it's still there. So I was kind of hoping it would be like that with Twitter. Like sure, Musk bought it, but as long as I can still use Twitter for free and it's like, mm. so I wanted to stay on it. Well then, so all these people were buying blue checks and it just, wreaking havoc. It was just sheer nonsense because people were pretending to be like dead presidents and saying ridiculous things. People were pretending to be the Pope or the living president and saying very inappropriate things, which, you know, and then Musk just laughs at it. But there were some very big consequences because uh, some people were pretending to be, oh, I don't know, like FTX and, and costing billions of dollars in stock plummeting. And, um, Eli Lilly. Someone posed as Eli Lilly and said, insulin's now free. And that cost them, I don't know, $20 billion. <laughs> but I mean, insulin should be free. 
the, I'm pretty sure the guy that invented insulin wanted it to be free. He didn't want price gouging from pharmaceutical companies. Like, this is a life-saving medicine that people need. How dare you try to charge ridiculous prices? It should be affordable for everyone. But anyways, um, so yeah, so some of the chaos that ensued, it's like, well, you know, this is kind of social activism. That's okay. I guess Musk wanted to cut even more corners and save more money since, you know, he'd already blown billions and now he didn't have the advertising. So he fired a bunch of his employees and then the ones that were left, you know, his skeleton crew, he basically threatened them that, you know, you're going to have to work twice as hard and blah, blah, blah. So then a lot of them quit. So then there was like this mass exodus and there was no one left. It's like, who's running Twitter? It's like, no one's flying this plane. Hopefully it's on autopilot, but then it was trending like RIP Twitter and goodbye Twitter and Twitter's dead and all this. And I was like, oh my God. So every tweet, I'm like the pressure, because this could be the last thing I ever tweet. Like what if it's just gone? And it's like, so then all these people were moving to other sites. So a lot of the accounts that I followed, they were talking about migrating to other sites. There's one called Mastodon, there's a uh, tribal, um, counter social. I, and I mean, I looked at them. I'm not a, I'm not a fan of change really. And it seemed to me that they're all kind of trying to be Twitter and it's, it's not going to be Twitter and they don't seem user friendly. They seem complicated and awkward and and also, like, at this stage of my life, I can't see starting from scratch. I can't see starting from scratch at a brand new site. Like, I just don't have it in me. So, I mean, if Twitter goes belly up, and I hope it doesn't, but if it does, um, I'll still have YouTube. And I'll do more Twitter-like content on YouTube. Like, I guess I'll share my thoughts on the Bachelor franchise and I'll doom scroll somehow from here. I'll do more COVID content. I'll do more, you know, stuff about the apocalypse that I used to do on Twitter. But hopefully it survives. I mean, it's still there. It's been days, there, for days people were saying goodbye Twitter, RIP Twitter, and it's still alive. So, but now, okay. So Musk, decided that he would do a poll to see whether he should bring back 45, the Orange Menace, who shall remain nameless because I haven't said his name since 2021, and I won't until and unless he is indicted and going to prison, and then I will gladly say his name and rejoice. But anyway, so he's been banned um, forever, and so Musk said he'll bring him back if, you know, that's what the people want. So then he, he posts this bullshit poll, like, should he, should he bring him back or not? Well, of course he would have filled it with his own maggot bots, you know, to to say yes. So the yes is one very, very narrow mar margin. But so then he's brought him back. But um, and he went from zero to like 85 million followers in a day. But he hasn't even tweeted anything yet. And he's probably scared because he's in a lot of trouble, obviously, for January 6th for inciting an insurrection, not to mention stealing classified FBI documents. I don't know how he isn't in jail yet, but lock him up now, please. Um, so I'm like, you know what? Yeah, it sucks that they brought him back, but I, I just blocked the account. Like, I don't want to hear anything he has to say. I don't care. Like, to me, he's irrelevant. He, he thinks he's running again. Like, he should be banned from ever running for office again, at a minimum, considering that he tried to overthrow democracy. Like, why is this guy any, allowed anywhere near politics? It's insane. But anyways, um, just please lock him up. So I'm like, I'll just avoid him, just like I block trolls. I, I mean, we can't let the dark side of Twitter, ruin it for the rest of us. Like Twitter is a good place for the alarmists, those that are telling the truth, the ones that I've trusted to keep me safe and they have kept me safe, safe through the pandemic. I've trusted them and uh, I don't listen to the minimizers, you know, and I don't listen to the trolls, I just block them. So I hope Twitter's gonna be okay. Like every time I log in, I'm like, is this the last time? Like, is it still gonna be there? But it's still working. And I mean, maybe a lot of these people that were having uh, goodbye Twitter and RIP twi Twitter trending, maybe they were disgruntled former employees because who could blame them? 
that, you know, they're out of a job now because of this idiot. And uh, so maybe, of course, they want Twitter to fail without them. You don't want to think that, you know, you worked so hard and now, you know, it can exist without you. But for people like me that, you know, love Twitter and don't want to give it up, I'm hoping it's going to be okay. Like, I don't know. Um, I did see, like, one of the stunts that a former employee had done. They had, like, on Twitter HQ, they had this light uh, streaming across with all these insults. So that was pretty cool. Um, but yeah, I hope it survives. I don't know. I mean, I guess time will tell, but I'm not leaving. Like I'm staying, I'm hold, I'm still holding on because to me, I don't want to give up that outlet. Um, and, uh, yeah. And there's still people on there that I value and I still want to see. So, I mean, everyone else can go to Mastodon, whatever. I'm, I'm not feeling it. Like, no, I'm staying on Twitter. So yeah, it's still there. So so far so good and I mean some people have complained that they've lost thousands of followers and that things have been different but to me I've gained a few followers like I don't know I, I compared it to uh, making friends on the Titanic like I don't know if the ship is sinking I'll stay as long as I can um, so yeah follow me on Twitter subscribe to me on YouTube I'm still gonna keep doing my thing and if this does fall apart like I said I'll still have YouTube and I'll use that as my outlet but other than that I guess I'll just spend less time online but I'm not starting over on a new site and I'm, I'm not feeling that so I guess we'll see hopefully Twitter lasts but you know and some people are speculating like um, did Musk buy this you know with good intentions but he's just such an incompetent idiot and doesn't know what he's doing or is he like just an evil mastermind and he's just an anarchist and is just deliberately trying to cause chaos and deliberately kill Twitter because then all those people that were telling the truth there no longer have a platform. So, I mean, I don't know. It might be a bit of both, but um, it is what it is. Hopefully Twitter thrives in spite of him. It won't be because of him, but... I mean, he's bragging that, oh, Twitter's doing so well, and look at all the engagement, and Twitter's more popular than ever. He's taking credit for it, but anyway, whatever. Um, as long as I still have my Twitter, I'm going to do my Wordle in the morning, and log into Twitter, and doom scroll, and share cat pics and GIFs. Um, that's what I do. So, yeah. So, thanks for watching. Take care. Stay safe.